Hello and welcome to Global Market Bulletin TV. We'd like to introduce you to our guest, Greg Duncan. He is the CEO of Virios Therapeutics, a development stage biotechnology company based in Georgia. The company trades under the NASDAQ ticker symbol VERI. Well, Greg, can you please introduce yourself and tell us a bit more about Virios for those who are not familiar with your work, focusing on advanced novel combination antiviral therapies to treat debilitating chronic diseases, including fibromyalgia or FM? Great. Well, first off, thank you for having me today. Uh, by way of background, I've been in the pharmaceutical industry for a little over 30 years. I've spent time at Pfizer, about 18 years of my career at Pfizer. I had the good fortune of launching Zoloft for Pfizer back in 92, Aricept, the world's leading in uh, anti-Alzheimer's medication, and worked on a number of household name drugs, Celecoxib or Celebrex, Lipitor, Zyrtec, et cetera. I uh, was with a company called UCB based out of Belgium, a specialty pharma company for a few years, and then joined a private entity focused on cystic fibrosis. I've been in my current role as the CEO of Virios Therapeutics, uh, Therapeutics excuse me, for about three years. Uh, what we are all about is taking activated viruses and specifically herpes viruses and taking them from an active state back to a dormant state. And by doing so, we've shown we can deliver very significant clinical benefits for patients with fibromyalgia, irritable bowel syndrome, and fatigue-related disorders. For context, it may surprise you that uh, both you and I and anybody listening is infected with hundreds of thousands of viruses. The good news, as disconcerting as that is, is that your immune system does an exquisite job of keeping those viruses in a dormant state so you can go on living your life in a very healthy manner. For a subset of the population, those viruses, and specifically the herpes viruses, which are the most common, get stressed. And when you are stressed as a patient, it could be anxiety about going back to the office post-COVID, it could be a health challenge, that virus gets activated and creates more copies of itself. That engenders an overheated immune response and the pain, fatigue, and other symptoms that are the hallmark of things like fibromyalgia, irritable bowel syndrome, and other related disorders. And the focus of the company is to take combination approach, two synergistic mechanisms, put them together an antiviral and a COX-2 inhibitor. And by administering this drug on a daily basis can take that activated virus back into a dormant state and deliver very significant clinical outcomes for patients. So the focus of the company is really about developing combination antiviral therapies to deliver long-term, very durable benefits for patients with chronic illnesses like fibromyalgia. Mm. Very interesting. Well, recently you announced your end of phase two meeting request with U.S. Food and Drug Administration to discuss advancing IMC1 into phase three development as a treatment for FM, and it's been scheduled for mid-March of this year. Can you give us an update regarding that information and any executive commentary regarding the news? Sure. So uh, just to step back a second, our lead compound, IMC1, that you referred to, is a combination of famcyclovir and salicoxib. We put these two things together and they actually do a really terrific job of taking that activated virus back into dormancy and getting back to a healthy status. Uh, we've shown with the administration of IMC1 very significant clinical benefits in a phase 2A trial. This past September, we unlocked the data from our phase 2B trial, the Fortress trial. And while we were disappointed at the overall results, it was very clear as you looked into the subgroups within the population that patients that had prior experience in clinical trials, more refractory patients, really had very poor outcomes. Uh, and we see this in other disease categories when patients that go from one trial to the next trial to the next trial can often represent a more refractory form of the disease. When we parse out the former trial participants and those patients that I would describe as community-based, new to clinical research, we see profoundly different outcomes. In fact, those new patients delivered very significant outcomes with the administration of IMC1. Specifically, we saw reductions in pain, fatigue, improvement in global health, uh, reductions in depression and anxiety that's associated with fibromyalgia. So the first part of that fortress data we unveiled in September is we've identified the population that's most likely to respond. The second key outcome from those data was that we determined for the second time in a row that IMC1 is exquisitely well tolerated. In fact, in both the phase 2A and the phase 2B trial, we showed that IMC1 was better tolerated than placebo. Uh, it's a very well-tolerated therapy. 
And for context, at our prior FDA engagement, the FDA said you can move to phase three, but we'd ideally like you to collect more safety data on this combination using higher doses that are presently available. And so as a consequence, we've now garnered that data. We can glean through our database the exquisite safety profile, plus target those patients who are new to market, new wild type community-based patients. And we'll make the case in March to progress IMC1 into phase three development. Formal feedback from those interactions will likely happen in April. And the beauty of this particular combination is it really addresses the primary need in fibromyalgia. There are three approved drugs in, in the fibromyalgia space. I'm very pleased to report that between myself, the executive team and the board of directors, we've actually launched two of those three drugs. So we know the space well. Uh, those three drugs are all effective, but they come with significant side effects. So that while most patients get some form of relief, they wind up cycling off the drug because they can't tolerate the side effects. IMC1, if it delivers the clinical benefits we saw in those new to market patients, uh, with the safety profile could be a real game changer for these patients with a fibromyalgia diagnosis. Mm, interesting. Well, additionally, the company also announced commencement of enrollment in your exploratory long COVID trial. The study is supported via an un unrestricted investigational grant to the Bateman Horn Center, a nonprofit interdisciplinary center of excellence advancing the diagnosis and treatment of myalgic encephalomyelitis or chronic fatigue syndrome, MECFS, um, FM post viral syndromes and related comorbidities. This is another major move for your organization. Yeah, uh, this is a very exciting complement to the IMC1 program. In this particular trial, we're focusing on a second development candidate, a combination of valciclovir and celecoxib to treat patients with long COVID symptoms. Uh, for context, and it's pleasing to know now that long COVID is no longer this obscure terminology or some disease nobody's ever heard of. The downside is it's become so pervasive, unfortunately, that we're all familiar with long COVID symptoms. Uh, and it may surprise you to know that up to 30% of patients who are infected with the SARS virus, the COVID virus, go on to develop long COVID sequelae or symptoms. The most common symptoms we see are fatigue, attention issues, and memory problems. We also know that the SARS-CoV-2 virus is a very potent reactivator of previously dormant viruses and specifically the Epstein-Barr virus. I'm sure you've heard of the Epstein-Barr virus. Uh, what most people don't know is Epstein-Barr is actually a herpes virus and it's exquisitely well treated by our combination. And so what we believe is happening with long COVID is you have Epstein-Barr, herpes one, herpes two, and then you stack the COVID virus on to these patients and you further stress out the immune system. We think it's the secondary viruses breaking through leading to the pain, uh, the fatigue, the memory loss, the attention issues that are the hallmark symptoms of long COVID. And as a consequence, we're treating patients for 12 weeks with valsiclovir and celecoxib to assess the compound's ability to reduce fatigue, to improve attention, to improve memory for patients with long COVID. Those data should uh, read out in June of this year. So we're really excited about the second program, which could be certainly from a commercial perspective, as large an opportunity as the fibromyalgia marketplace opportunity is. That's incredible. Can you tell us a bit more about that and your work on second development candidate IMC2, Valacyclovir and Celecoxib as a potential treatment for managing the fatigue, sleep, attention, pain, um, autonomic function, and anxiety associated with long COVID, otherwise known as post-acute sequelae of COVID-19 or PASC. Yes, post-acute sequelae of COVID is a, uh, it's a formal term for long COVID. Uh, we are focusing IMC1 on fibromyalgia, and we'll have our FDA feedback about progressing IMC1 into phase three development formally by April of this year. IMC2 is, uh, we hope to enroll that long COVID program fully by the end of February or early part of March with data readout in June of this year. The other indication we're excited about, which really ties back to the founder's experience in creating this idea and this company, is irritable bowel syndrome. I think most people know somebody with IBS. There's different forms of IBS. But the sad fact with IBS is that the vast majority of patients who are treated for IBS are treated with something that's really focused on symptom management, not a root cause of a disease. 
much like is the case with fibromyalgia. We think in IBS, it's activation of previously dormant herpes viruses, which are triggering the symptoms. And why do we think that in both diseases? Well, if you think about most diseases, hypertension, high cholesterol, those diseases are on all the time. The unique features of the somatic syndrome disorders like fibromyalgia and IBS is that the symptoms tend to wax and wane over time. And that really is what underpins our belief that it's either the activation of the virus, an infection, or the immune response to that activation, or potentially both, that's triggering the flare-up in symptoms. And so we will be looking to potentially explore IMC1 as a potential treatment for not just fibromyalgia, but as well for IBS as we move forward. That is a program that will, uh, we think is exquisitely suited to some form of partnership. Uh, but suffice it to say that the founder of the company, who's a gastric surgeon, Dr. William Pridgen, actually started utilizing this particular combination on his IBS patients. And he noticed when those flare-ups happened, he started treatment with valciclovir uh, or famciclovir and silicoxib, and the symptoms improved over time. When the patient stopped the therapy, their symptoms came back. And so that led him to explore this particular combination, create these molecules, get the intellectual property protection for utilization of these molecules to treat patients with these diseases that wax and wane over time. So fibromyalgia, IBS, and long COVID are our nearest term top priorities. Thank you for that. Well, what do you feel is the current biggest problem and market opportunity in sustaining chronic illnesses such as FM, irritable bowel disease, chronic fatigue syndrome, and other functional somatic syndromes that Virios is working to address? Yeah, I think um, historically the two big challenges are people are treating symptoms, so they're not getting to the root cause that creates the symptom flare up. The other issue is most of the therapies that are utilized to treat fibromyalgia and or IBS, uh, long COVID is a little bit new, so we don't really have standard regimens there, but in fibromyalgia and IBS, the primary issue is tolerability. Uh, specifically with fibromyalgia, we know that the biggest complaint from patients and doctors and payers for that matter, the insurance companies, because they want patients to get to better outcomes, so they stop utilizing services so frequently, is side effects. And there's a very simple reason for that, and that is all of the three approved drugs in fibromyalgia are CNS mediated in their mechanism of action. When you play with the central nervous system, you can have downstream effects. That is well known. And unfortunately, that leads most patients who are treated with the approved therapies in fibromyalgia to cycle off. So as I referenced earlier, the fact that IMC1 was better tolerated than even placebo could be a fundamentally different profile of a drug. And we believe could lead to really game-changing status for these patients by administering IMC1 as a potential drug that targets the root cause and is well tolerated moving forward. It's very exciting. Well, looking to the future, is there anything new or exciting that investors can look forward to in the next, say, six to 12 months? Sure. Just looking at 2023, we will look to uh, fully recruit the long COVID program sometime at the end of quarter one or middle of quarter one. Quarter two, we'll have our formal feedback from FDA on the fibromyalgia program. Quarter uh, three, we'll have the long COVID data in that June, July timeframe. And then quarter four, we'll be starting, we hope to start the phase three program, presuming alignment with FDA, uh, to really advance IMC1 as a potential game changer for patients with fibromyalgia. So very significant development milestones over the, uh, the course of even just 2023. Now, taking it a step further, how about in the next three to five years, uh, anything in the pipeline for the team at Varios Therapeutics? So if you've tracked through the fibromyalgia development program, uh, we would anticipate concluding the trials by sometime, call it the end of 2025. We'd file the application and we would look to actually launch uh, IMC1 for the treatment of fibromyalgia sometime at the end of 2026 or beginning of 2027. So there is a very, very significant commercial milestone, which is kind of our North Star, if you will, right now, uh, either alone or potentially in partnership, because this is a big category. And uh, I think there'll be some other parties that are interested in partnering with us, particularly uh, for the uh, fibromyalgia program. Uh, so that is our North Star right now. We hope to file an IND for IMC1 as a treatment for IBS sometime probably towards the middle of next year as a second program. And then... You know, we really think this long COVID program, if our thesis is correct, that it's a secondary virus is becoming activated, 
is the key to unlock better health outcomes for patients with long COVID. Now we're talking about millions and millions of patients who suffer from long COVID. Mm -hmm. We have another potential massive opportunity, both from a development perspective, uh, commercial perspective, and importantly, to change outcomes for these patients that suffer from long COVID symptoms. Wow. Well, this has been extremely informative, Greg. Thank you so much for that. Could you please let the audience know the best place that they can go to for more information on your company? Sure. Uh, simplistically, um, Viri.com is our website. That's the quickest place to get background on the programs and the team, et cetera. Uh, and we actually have a specific investor uh, email address where we look, you know, we contact people every day. Uh, literally, we are very open with our communication with investors. Uh, people are always curious about what's going on, what's new, uh, are we on track, all those good things. And we do respond. We don't have armies of people that decide should we respond or not. We, generally speaking, uh, pick up the phone and call people uh, sometime within the next day or so if uh, if they're available. And uh, we'd be happy to do so with anybody who has interest in Viri. That's great. Well, thank you so much for your time, Greg. And we look forward to monitoring your company's success. And we look forward to speaking with you again soon. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much for the time today. Oh,